We begin with the Jerry Cole Sportsmanship Award, which celebrates exceptional character, community involvement, and service to others. Mr. Cole was a 20-year member of the Board of Directors. His passion for junior golf was so strong that at his funeral, every attendee in Chickasaw, Oklahoma, wore an AGAGA hat in his honor. A bronze replica hat was created and the award renamed in his memory. I'm excited to announce our first recipient from Milton, Georgia, Allie Cantor. Thank you, Sean Carl. I'm so humbled to receive this honor. Before we get into our conversation, let's learn more about Allie. I can tell whenever I work with Allie that she's not doing things just for herself. She wants to work for the greater good. She makes other girls around her better on the, on the team because they see her work ethic and, you know, they come to me and they ask me, well, what can I do to get better? Just go watch Allie. Everything that she does, she puts 110% into. And that has really inspired me to almost just be like Allie. She never settles for enough. She always wants to do more and reach higher for those around her. It takes a lot of perseverance to have something bestowed upon you like this that requires wearing a brace 16 hours a day that is directly against the sport of golf. For her to, to persevere through that, there's a lot of dedication she put in. She just always puts a smile on my face whenever I see her. She just always makes the room brighter. She really makes me happy. She's just a really good friend. Take us back to your 13th birthday. How did a routine physical reroute your life? So that's the visit when I found out that I may have scoliosis and I ultimately was diagnosed with three curvatures in my spine, an 11 degree curve in my neck, a 30 degree curve in my thoracic spine, and an 18 degree curve in my lumbar spine. Those numbers are pretty crazy, is that common? Not common to have a curve that big, but it definitely is more common in, in girls than boys. But my family and I were really shocked because at, up to that point I hadn't had any pain or visible signs of a spinal deformity. And once you progress to 40 degrees, um, that's kind of the point of no return and you have to get spinal fusion surgery. So we definitely knew at that point that I had to put everything else on the back burner and really focus on my treatment. Right, so, so tell us a little bit about that process of being diagnosed. So at that initial visit, the brace that I was prescribed offered no hope of correction and was developed in 1972. And that just wasn't good enough for me and my family. We felt that there had to be another option. So with the help of my family, I did lots of extensive research and ended up finding another brace. And this new brace called the Rigo Cheneau was only available in two places in the country, one in San Diego, California, and one in Fairfax, Virginia. So for the next two years, I flew back and forth from Virginia to um, get this new brace. Wow, that's a lot, especially with the, the experimental brace. What did treatment look like for you? So the treatment for me was, I had to wear the brace for 22 hours a day, every single day for 18 months. And then for an additional six months after that, I had to wear the brace at night. And I had to do physical therapy three times per week to try to avoid muscle atrophy in my back. And it was really hot. Um, it's really hot in Atlanta, so it wasn't necessarily comfortable to be wearing the brace. In the summer, I would stick mini ice packs inside of the brace cavities to keep myself cooler. But I really knew that it was important for me to dedicate myself to this so that I could achieve correction. This wasn't really something that um, I talked about a lot. And I'm really grateful that the AJGA has given me this platform, though, to share my story, because it's really important for me to be a positive example for other girls going through this, that you don't have to give up your athletic goals when you receive a diagnosis like this. Because when I was going through treatment, I didn't necessarily have somebody who had buckled down, committed to their treatment, and then still been able to achieve all they wanted in athletics afterwards. And it's really important for me to be that positive example that I didn't have. And another motivation for me was to be a positive data point because my ultimate goal is to have this newer brace to be the standard of care for everybody. So along with successfully finishing your brace and becoming a positive example for, for girls with, uh, with your form of scoliosis, I also understand you've used Leadership Links to help fundraise for some others. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, so I've been using Leadership Links for two years to fundraise for the Outcome Center at Children's Healthcare of Atlanta. And my care manager, my surgeon, um, who managed all of my care, works at Children's now, and he's the head of the Outcome Center. And all of the money that I've raised for leadership links that went to Children's went directly to him, and he's been doing research on patient outcomes and the results of people in this newer brace technology to help, like I said, increase that pool of positive outcomes and 
support the reliability of this newer technology. So now more insurance companies are covering it and they had begun the process of bringing the newer brace to Atlanta when I was in treatment and they've successfully done that now. So because of him and the work that he's doing at the Outcome Center, this newer brace is now much more available to kids in the Southeast, which is awesome.